I don't remember where I read this, but somebody said that all the art that important smart people call avant-garde is just folk art, the art of regular people, reclaimed by others rich enough to call themselves artists. And I have to wonder if the sort of boring, regular art we encounter every day is some of the most impactful. The stuff that's too subtly out there for our self-appointed artists and bohemians to even try copying. There's a mural in the Peter Pond Mall in Fort McMurray, Alberta. It's in one of those spots we decided to call liminal spaces, tucked in a corner, probably with some benches around it. In my memory, the sun is hitting it and shooting past it, illuminating a little nook. I have no idea what it was a painting of, and after many hours of research, I don't know if it even existed. Some kind of natural scene, I think. But this absolutely mundane piece left me with a total vision of Alberta and all its beauty and all its ugliness. It's a blank spot in my brain that points to everything else about that place. All of Fort McMurray is liminal. It's a glorified work camp. Even its suburbs feel temporary, like you know the arrangement can't last but you aren't totally sure why. It's a tense place. Most suburbs feel totally dead, but Fort Mac circa 2006 witnessed an endless procession of newfies in search of a decent wage, squeezing oil from my country's gross black sand. It was alive in the sense that shit was moving, at least. We lived in a duplex, meaning a shared building split down the middle. Our neighbor was a crack or meth or something addict. I remember one time somebody across the street bought a goat, so I'm assuming drug addiction was pretty common. In my family, the chosen form of degeneracy was prescription pills, which I guess is better, but that's a pretty fucking low bar. I only saw the goat once. I had maybe two real friends. Everybody's friends at that age, but there was one kid who I spent all my time with. We played Guitar Hero 3 and Smash Brothers Brawl, and it didn't matter back then how good we were, but I remember he could play Guitar Hero on hard, and this must have impressed me because I still remember it. A girl he liked called him a fag, so he stopped hanging out with me and then his family moved back to Newfoundland. Fort McMurray produces a specific type of person, right on the razor's edge of white trash and middle class. The former is an identity that I'm proud of, because it reminds me that rich people don't get to tell me what's beautiful. The latter was an illusion anyway. The oil sands offered temporary money but no upward mobility. Most lottery winners squander the money, and nobody in those lottery commercials ever dreams about living a comfortable, modest life on the dividends of an index fund. If I won the lottery, I'd buy one of those Japanese futon things and a good computer and meals for my friends. My other friend was on Roblox, a British kid my age. We both lied to each other incessantly, making up a common fantasy that still felt like a betrayal when it was over. I pretended I was 22 because back then you weren't supposed to share your identity online. The internet is a machine made to traumatize children, and my age was definitely still in single digits when I started reading Encyclopedia Dramatica. As weird as TikTok is, as aggravating as it is when people don't understand the internet, computer illiteracy is at least protecting kids from the sickness that makes you want to meticulously document everything you hate. This is all to say that, for about as far back as my memory goes, I've felt broken and alone. I have an impulse that makes me feel like I'm constantly about to say the wrong thing and ruin all my relationships. Sometimes this makes me talk too much, sometimes it makes me unable to speak at all. It's very easy to blame yourself for everything, but self-improvement is a trap. Everybody who gets into it comes out a reactionary or more miserable than when they started. I've been both at various times. Taking responsibility for yourself is important, but we're products of a world that doesn't work for us, and ignoring that is just a recipe for driving yourself nuts. The economy, the way we produce our lives and distribute our resources, looms over everything. I didn't know that when I found 4chan. I didn't know that when neighbors' screams leaked through our shared wall at night. I didn't know that when I went to the oil sands discovery center and took in the toy-like majesty of their big loader. It had massive wheels and illuminated buttons that made me think of the Space Invaders arcade machines I was obsessed with. My home is a shanty town where men traded in their dignity so their families could survive. 
And even that was a goddamn lie. All they did was poison our air and make us insane and burn the whole province down. And when the housing crisis happened, we had to leave anyway. Because so many people were killing each other, they figured it wasn't good for me to grow up there. Like either I wouldn't make it or the smell of death on the wind would do something to me. It doesn't make sense to a kid that oil could summon the resources to create a town. Or that oil would create a town where the mall and the casino shared a parking lot and where people had the kinds of drug problems that worked well with a two weeks on, two weeks off schedule. It made even less sense that people executed all this. As an adult, somebody I worked with told me once that she didn't know people could be from Fort McMurray. She lived in a town that was founded to mine asbestos, a sad, dead place that the feds had left to rot. But all winter it smelled of wood smoke and on Sunday nights I'd sit outside in the cold, catching bits of hymns that came through the church walls. Even asbestos mining towns have stained glass windows. Art is a claim on the future, no matter where it shows up or how banal it seems. A pastoral painting in a mall in a town famous for how many ducks it poisons is not a cheap distraction, it's a prayer. This is a video about art and money at the turn of the 21st century from the perspective of our most popular art form, video games.